Welcome back to VMworld Live. I'm John Troyer. Very pleased to have with me today Steve Herod, our CTO. Steve, welcome to the show. Hey, John. How are you? Thanks for being on. I'm great. So, Steve, you flew in for the conference. You were in the keynote this morning. How has the conference been so far? Andrew? This is the biggest VMworld ever. Uh, VMworld Europe, yeah, definitely yeah. the biggest yet. Um, I was just getting the, the numbers on this. I heard, you know, obviously more than 6,000 people, but as a techie, I'm really into the lab side of things. And uh, especially since we have this hybrid cloud setup, I was just checking in with the team. Uh, they've launched more than 2,000 lab sessions, I think 2,100 as of a few minutes ago. And to do that, they've actually created and turned on and turned off, um, I think, over 19,000 virtual machines at this point. It's just amazing to me that we're able to do all that on top of our existing products. So that's, that's very exciting. It's great. They even opened up a day early, which I think kind of tells you the agility gains, uh, maybe that as a result of this cloud deployment. Yeah, I think it's certainly about being able to set up things more rapidly. Um, most of the labs are actually running out of the east coast of the U.S. Um, and Verizon and Terramark, so, so that's pretty neat as well. Great network experience. Um, but what, what it is, you know, this conference, you and I have been around for a little while, it's always been about the technology exchange and people learning about the products. And I understand things like vCloud Director are getting just a, a huge number of people looking at the labs and trying to understand and get a real hands-on experience with these new products. Yeah. Well, say, we, we did launch vCloud Director in, in San Francisco uh, at, at, at VMworld there. So as you've been talking to customers, what has the response been? And from the, we've, we've had, a, a, in the technical community, in the blogging community, huge amount of interest. We had the uh, cloud practice team on here today mm -hmm. talking about it. Um, it, it, seems like, uh, it seems like a product that is sparking a number of conversations. Is yeah, it, it, is it for you? It really has, um, I, I w was very optimistic from the time it started. We started the development probably two years ago. Um, and the idea was, as we talked about in the keynote, uh, a lot of IT departments have tried to come up with ways to create their own service catalogs or ways to respond to, to user requests. And some of them have been good and, and uh, a lot of people have used them. But now we're giving a turnkey solution where people can really go straight to the user, have them log into their, you know, their personal portal and just help themselves to things. And uh, you know, we started this whole arena in the lab manager front. Uh, this product that allowed people in the test and development communities to just help themselves. And as you know, developers really like to uh, aggressively use technology. But now we've really generalized it in vCloud Director. And um, I have to say, anecdotally, uh, the number of customers who are excited about it and the number that are saying, wow, I really can give control back to the user, it's, it's quite exciting. So I don't know any early sales figures. I'm sure we'll share something at the right time. But uh, the number of customers who've asked questions and who have proof of concepts at least underway is quite large. Yeah, well for a 1.0 product, it, it's, it's very mature. I mean, we, we worked with Lighthouse customers. I was here with the cloud practice today talking about mm -hmm. how they were involved from the very beginning uh, in, in helping define the product and helping uh, really stand it up and make sure that it's a very yeah. usable 1.0 product ready for prime time. Yeah, what's, what's also interesting about it, uh, we're using that same product for our service provider partners, the ones you had on. Um, and to my knowledge, no one's really targeted a product at the service providers at the same time they're targeting the enterprise. And as you heard, that's really part of the goal. We want the same management experience and the same user experience for whatever part of this hybrid cloud you're using. But it also meant that we're getting, we're getting the demands and the needs of you know, very big uh, deployments in the service providers and some different requirements from the enterprise. So a lot of what we've done is balance those and make sure we can satisfy as much as possible of those. Well, the other thing that, that people talk about when I asked about the keynote this morning that you were in is uh, they start talking about Project Horizon. And uh, often that's one of the highlights of, 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 of their, their experience. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about Pro Project Horizon? Everybody's eyes start to get, get, get bright and they start to <laughs> smile. So I think, again, yeah. we, there's something there that people are going to be interested in. Yeah, I, personally, I love the, the story of what we do at home and how it doesn't necessarily match what we do at work. And it, you know, it really is a simple concept. We have all these different devices and we have all these different applications. And traditionally at work, it's a desktop and Windows. But you know, as we have these new applications, maybe written in the spring language, as we have these SaaS applications, why can't I safely access those within the enterprise? And then likewise, sure, I have this desktop PC, but I also have my cell phone, I have an iPad, there's all these Android devices. You know, so the simple goal is how do we stitch these all together, give the user freedom to access all devices on, all apps on all devices, but still give control to IT. And I, I love the way Paul talks about it. He says these, uh, these SaaS applications are a growing 
into the enterprise like weeds, I think he said, creating an unkempt garden. And he talks about the zoo of devices that are coming in. So we're really trying to take all that and, and tame it and let it be something that IT can control. So IT as zoo, IT, zookeeping as a service, maybe. <laughs> zookeeping and gardening, I guess. As a service. We talk a lot about IT as a service. Uh, I like that the, the concept, the term. It seems to resonate with me and the people I talk to. As you go out and talk to other CIOs and CTOs, does that make sense to them? Or is it resonating with them? And, and are they, um, is it aspirational or operational for them these days? Well, the, the term itself is, is a little bit complex, IT as a service. But um, I actually, I really like the terse definition that we have. It's around optimizing IT production for business consumption. And it, it's a little bit of a mouthful, but I actually like the real visual on the stage is the way we keep doing this. There's two real players at work in the enterprise. There's the, the guys who have to make things run and, and offer up virtual machines and even applications. But just as important as the people that use it. And um, it's kind of goofy with some of the pictures that I was using and all, but the, the real goal here is to focus on the end user experience, let them consume things as quickly as possible. And that is something that you know, it really creates happy users, and a lot of the IT departments don't want to be seen as a, uh, a hurdle that people are going around or a cost center. They want to be really part of the business and be quite responsive. So I think that notion of IT becoming a user-centric hero of the business is what resonates quite well. Yeah, well, we all want to be heroes. Absolutely. <laughs> I sometimes say to my, our community site that uh, every time they, they get a raise or a promotion, then I've done my job. And yep. Unfortunately, that doesn't translate into a raise or promotion <laughs> for me usually, but uh, we'll work on that we work later. on that. Yeah. So uh, on your blog, and, and we'll talk about, let's talk about your new CTO site in a second, um, you talk about open, open paths, open, open platform as a service, kind of this concept of what VMware is trying to provide for building new cloud-style apps. Uh, and kind of getting to that next that next stage of IT. Can you talk about open the, the open platform a little bit? Yeah, the, the concept is also a mouthful. Um, platform is a service that is something that is abbreviated PaaS and is getting a, a fair amount of traction, basically for these same concepts behind general cloud computing. As a developer, I actually want to write an application and I want to just write the logic. I want to make it look cool on screens, whatever screen is there. But what really happens is that you then have to worry about all these other things. I want to go grab the right app server. I want to grab the right web server. Hey, this one has a security patch that's missing. You know, do I have enough machinery? So the, the nirvana for a developer is that I worry about the logic and I, I set expectations, like this is a high bandwidth website. And then I want everything else handled for me. I don't want to worry about it. And that's the concept behind platform as a service. Just hide all the details and give me the platform to write to. Um, now, the, the challenge with platform as a service has been that people are, rightfully, they're trying to create these things for the first time, but when a cloud provider makes a custom platform as a service, one way of writing these things, uh, you hear a lot of concerns that that's great, but now I'm stuck in that particular cloud. So you're writing something specifically to one way, can't get out. So the concept behind open platform as a service is to really embrace the choice that people want to have. So we have choice on a few fronts. We want to allow people to not just have to write in one language, not just .NET is a common not example. Not just Java? Uh, well, Java is certainly the one that we're addressing first, mm -hmm. and um, this does get a little confusing. We bought Spring Source, uh, you know, a great mm -hmm. company for writing Java in a simple way, but what we announced today and what you should expect several other announcements about is that it's not just about Java. We want to be the place where all of these new frameworks can come together and work. And uh, you wouldn't believe the, the recent interest in all these types of ways of writing web apps. Uh, we're going to focus certainly on other things like Ruby on Rails, but there's a lot of new ones that are coming out. Uh, Node is a very popular way of writing certain applications. Um, Erlang is even coming back for some of you that have ever heard of Erlang. So we think the, the open pass concept is giving this notion of a very easy way to develop, but we don't want to in any way restrict the developers into what type of language they use or ultimately what cloud they're running it from. Interesting. And we had an announcement today about uh, uh with a partner uh, using our path, our paths, our paths. Yeah, yeah, and this is the real exciting part. So we've we've announced a number of partnerships. Um, we're actually showing in the demonstration center how we work with Salesforce.com to allow you to write Spring applications in the Salesforce cloud. It's a joint venture called mm -hmm. VMForce. Um, we've also announced doing work with Google, where mm -hmm. they're going to actually be able to take these applications and make them run on the Google App Engine. Uh, today we announced a really nice one for the enterprise side, which is with CSC. Um, CSC is one of the top five global uh, system integrators, and they are actually going to offer up a Spring Cloud for their users. And this will be a Spring platform as a service, the vFabric offering. And what it means is that people will be able to log in directly to this cloud and write applications, and they'll get the support, and they'll get everything just happening automatically for them. 
So I think it's, it's further validation that the notion of writing applications and having them be portable and having them be in this new model of PaaS is, is really going to take off. So I, I love the way you write about it, actually. Very interesting. Now, you're doing more writing now since uh, you and the office of the CTO just launched a new site. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we've been trying to, um, to get a lot more leverage, really. Um, I personally tried to travel a lot of places, and it's, it's, uh, it's hard to get as much leverage and reach out to people. And what's also the case is I don't like just presenting things. I actually am really, especially in this time of a lot of changes, really interested in hearing different ideas um, from a lot of people. So we just launched this recently, but um, I have a great group of members of the CTO office that cover everything from the desktop to security to focuses on the federal government, uh, even someone focusing on high-performance computing. And so I really want to foster a lot of discussions about what we're thinking. And just as importantly, I want to get feedback that people agree with it or they have different ideas. And that's what the forums and all the videos are about. That's great. I think, yeah, the discussions have started already. I encourage people to go by. It's at uh, communities.vmware.com slash uh, community slash CTO, I believe. That's right. There's probably a shorter URL. <laughs> but, and also, I love, I love the blogging that you guys are doing. I think the amount of uh, brain matter per, you know, column inch there is pretty high, right? It's these are guys really with dense. a lot of experience that have talked to a lot of people, and they're starting to share that information on these blogs. I think they're, they're very interesting, what you guys have done so far. Yeah, it takes a real discipline to keep getting those ideas out there. Um, but these aren't, these aren't product pitches or roadmaps. These are discussions yeah. of technology directions, and um, hopefully people will get something out of them, and hopefully they'll send us questions or even correct what they think we're wrong on. Yeah. But it's great. really about this, the communication amongst you know, all the people in the community here. Yeah, great. I think you're doing a great job. Well, Steve, thanks for coming on VMworld Live. I'm glad you were here today. Uh, we, we're uh, broadcasting live throughout the, uh, the show here. I really appreciate talking to you. Okay. Thanks as always, John. All right. Thank you.